Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Voices of the Festival. I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> Today I'm in Amarillo, Texas. Um, I'm here with Amarillo Opera doing um, Rigoletto and we open tomorrow. And uh, all right, and I'm going to invite uh, Susan Whitmire. Let's see. Um, let me see who is watching. She should be. She should be there. Um, all right. Let's uh, uh, him. There we go. Yeah. And now she'll accept the invitation, and uh, she should be able to join. And um, unless something happens, <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. We are. Um, uh, remind you that our gala is coming up in in a month uh, or even less than a month actually on uh, Wednesday <clears throat> April 26 in the Ar Harmony Club in New York <clears throat> the gala for the Cheryl Mills voice programs that includes voice experience and uh, Savannah West Festival especially um, for the educational programs uh, of the Cheryl Mills programs which uh, as you know, in Savannah will have a huge uh, impact because of the study grants that we're bringing to the season. We, we're having uh, almost half of our artists will be um, full scholarship and uh, students and singers. Okay, she's not able to join. So, Susan, um, make sure that you update your your application you go to updates and uh and have the application updated it's very simple again go to the app and um and update application sometimes that that's a bit of a problem um and i see that you're watching so i will send you the invitation again um my voice is a little low today um but Again, so and uh, and in the gala we have amazing guests, um, especially um, a feature um, presentation of uh, Lawrence Brownlee that is going to present the prize to uh, George Shirley, which is our awardee of the Cheryl Mings Prize um, this year, which we are very honored that he's going to be in New York to uh, receive the um, uh, prize. And also um, James Morris and Martin Arroyo and many others will be present. Uh, we have performances of Mark Delavant, Santiago Ballerini, Christopher Job, and um, Melanie Spector, uh, Evelyn Saavedra, and um, many, many, many wonderful uh, artists. Okay, so it's going to be a wonderful evening. Make sure that you get your tickets uh, in our website, savannahvoicefestival.org. Uh, um, and she's not able to join yet. Uh, I don't know why. Um, let me see if it's... Um, she sent me the invitation to uh, uh, accept it, and hopefully she will get it. There you are. Yeah. There we go. Ta -da! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's no, so, so good. I, 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 it gave me time to, to talk about the gala, so it was perfect. Uh, and as you know, uh, and, um, the gala is coming up uh, at the end of next month in on the 26th, Wednesday the 26th in the Harmony Club. So we are very excited to to be there. Um, we are presenting the prize to George Shirley. So we are very honored that he's coming. And uh, Larry Brownlee is presenting the prize to him. So it's uh, it's really great and, and and james is coming and and you are coming and martina and uh, so everyone so it's really great can you hear me do you hear me okay i hear you can you hear me yep yeah okay good oh. good good that's just sometimes when i put the phone on on, on the surface mm -mm. The, the microphone gets stuck so where are you i'm home i'm good. home in the living room and uh, <laughs> i know i i love the, the wallpaper do you <laughs> yeah very old. Can, can I wear my glasses? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. And um, where, uh, where is home? Home is in New Jersey. Okay. Okay. Uh, not too far from New York City, about an hour okay. away. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, Good. Uh, it's nice. Have you been there for a long time? Yes, about a little over 30 years. Oh, wow. 
fantastic. Yeah. And uh, and I know that you are, uh, you you teach in Rutgers, right? I do. I teach at Mason Gross, yeah, School of the Arts. Uh, yeah. So so that is not far from you either. So it's like yeah, yeah. Really, yeah it's about 30 minutes. Great. Great. Good. My husband Jim goes into the city is about it's only an hour away but it takes a lot longer. So I have I get to just go 30 minutes and I'm there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's uh that's always a little problem with with commuting to New York that it's is sometimes it's not far to go back but you yeah. always had to plan for a long way in just in case. Right? Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So especially if you had to be there I assume yeah. yeah. When when you guys had to go to a performance and you had to be there so it's like a different story yeah you just go in very early <laughs> exactly so that that is what happened yeah. and um and so and uh, where where are you from originally i'm from long island oh. so not too far away. yeah not too far away about uh 45 minutes from new york city it was very easy to go in by train um so yeah so i went into new york city a lot even as a kid where where in long island port washington Oh yeah. So the North Shore, yeah. a really good train line, <laughs> and uh, oh. yeah. So I spent a lot of the time, at, my time, in New York City back then. Our uh, our first dog, uh, we got her from from the North Shore, North Shore um, Animal League. Animal League, yeah. yeah. So uh, oh, yeah, that's right in my hometown. Right, and yeah. we I remember going going there for the first time to to pick her up, but then. But then every time we had to do a treatment, especially when she was a puppy, so we, we went there often. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I haven't been there in a while, but um, beautiful. But it's a, it, it is fun. Really, really pretty, yeah. So. yeah. A lot of music going on there, and arts, and it's a good really time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. good. Good town to come from. Yeah, good. And is is North Shore a a town also, or is or is it no. just an area? No, North Shore, so Long Island, there's the North Shore and the South Shore. <laughs> and uh, uh, Port Washington is, is on the North oh, Shore, so. Port, uh, <laughs> Port Washington is a town, right, right. Yeah. Great, excellent, good. And uh, how do you start uh, with music? Uh, um, how did I start? I just, um, I always loved music. So just from the, you know, from my first memories, I loved music. So. Um, uh, my father lo was more passionate than I was. I th am, I think, you know, even about music, even though that wasn't his job, you know, he, um, and so I, I started out hearing music uh, from the first time I can remember. And I know I was singing early because my father recorded it. Not, I was, my Bonnie lies over the ocean, nothing too, too terribly difficult, <laughs> but I think I was three or four. Oh, wow. Um, how did he record? How did he record that? Some giant old <laughs> dinosaur of a you know a big tape thing. I mean, it was a big deal to it. He was recording my brothers too, not singing, just talking. So we have us you know some ancient uh, recordings of us doing talking, and I decided to sing. So there you go. Um, that well, was great. And uh, and then I played instruments and in high school and took piano and it was just you know a big part of my life from the beginning good that i care and and when do you decided to to go for music as a profession um i decided in my high school in in high school right as i was applying to colleges and then i uh had a little a uh, problem with my choral teacher for about a month and they decided not to <laughs> which was ridiculous because that was my really my life at school other than I really did like academics too but um, my joy was from music and then so I went I decided uh, that I wanted to be I think I thought a music teacher at that point or music therapist is what I was thinking too because I really didn't know, even though I went to operas in the city with my father, even though I was very involved in things at school, musicals, um, even in opera at one point, the medium. Um, and and uh, I just didn't know quite how you do it as a career. 
so it was it unfolded gradually right. <laughs> very uh uh, somewhere in my undergrad, I went to Illinois Wesleyan uh, in Bloomington, Illinois, and the School of Music there. And somewhere along the way, I decided to go for performance and uh, instead of education. And that kind of just, you know, gradually I gave it a, you know, had to see what happened. And, and then little, little by little, it worked out. So... And so, so you went for college in Bloomington, Indiana? No, Illinois. 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 Illinois it's oh. another one, yeah. Okay. And there's some opera singers that came have that came from that little school of music. So uh, it was really good for me. It was a smaller start. You know, it wasn't a big school. And and why why Illinois from coming from mm -hmm. Long Island? I know because out of the schools that I applied to during that one month that I decided not to go into music, <laughs> it was just one month, and that's when I was applying to schools. Uh, this is the one that had a school of music in it. And so I thought I'd start there and see what happened, and it turned out that I loved it. But um, my grandmother, lived, my mother was from Illinois, and so I went to Illinois a lot, visiting my, gran my grandparents, and I still go back. Is it... Uh, um... Was it near the school near from from your grandparents? Uh, yeah, a couple of hours away south. Okay. They live in Chicago. Okay. Yeah, I not didn't see them very much. Once you go to school, you know. You're, you're yeah, just... yeah, but 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 at least it feel like you are in a place that uh, that is familiar to you. So that that or and also the feeling that oh, if if you need anything, at least you you have your grandparents right there <laughs> and uh, you can do on the weekends. And of course, that they always a plan, but then by the middle of the year, that, uh, who are my parents? Who are the grandparents? Who, who, who? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> Yeah. So I remember going from um, for college to Buenos Aires, coming from all the way from a small town in, in the middle of the Pampa. I mean, the capital of, of the, lab province, uh, the province, but, but it's still um, far. So, and the idea was to come at least every month and, um, but it was an ordeal. I mean, this that's far. It's, it's about overnight uh, bus ride. So, uh, so that soon, you know, we I didn't need that that connection that often. I suppose just well, phone calls will will suffice. That's, that's what happens, right? I mean, it was you start out, and uh, I went to see my grandparents probably the second weekend there, and visited friends and then it's just what happens over time i you know that was it right you're just cool the whole time yeah and enjoying it yeah and did you finish in in that in that uh, school the college did i actually thought well i did go uh one semester to hart college of music uh and i realized how much how many opportunities i had in illinois so i went back um oh. <clears throat> because it was just a um, better situation to be able to perform. I don't mean opera even, I just mean um, recitals and going to operas in Chicago and um, it was just a better, um, more nurturing atmosphere. So Good. went back, yeah. Good. So, so that's not too far from, from Chicago? It's three hours, but, oh. <laughs> but but we went there a lot. Okay. Yeah, for you know, for opera. Great. So you you already knew that you liked opera then more than education. Yeah. Well, I other than more than what? That education. Um, I I do love teaching even now. You know, I mean, I love yeah. teaching, and I had already done some teaching. And I really liked it a lot, but I knew that um, I really wanted, I thought maybe I can try and sing, you know? So I'll do that and see what happens. But when I'm in education, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about being a music teacher in the elementary yeah. kind of school, because probably that's where, that's where you, you first were right. thinking of doing, right? So yeah. not, not singing voice or singing opera, but singing music and... And I still, even then, I still taught. I taught at church. I ran the choir, uh, the little kids' choir. I was, I, I really did, and I loved being with children. So, um, and 
in music, but still, that's I really had a passion for singing. So good, 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 good. And and then uh, and after that, after you finished with with college, so my undergrad degree. So then I went to Manhattan School of Music, and uh, and so I. Well, you know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. Um, I got a scholarship there. I, I mean, I had applied to other schools. I got a scholarship there, and they had invited me into. They had an opera program, and, and I was invited into the opera program, and we were going to do all these Mozart operas and that year. And I got there in about three – this is so many years ago. I got there about um, three weeks later. They had to cancel the opera program and because oh, of money and so i i was oh my gosh you know like what have i done so i just concentrated so they did maybe some scenes i think and one big opera and the fact is that the one big opera they did was street scene and there wasn't really anything for me at that time my voice in street scene and so i got a speaking role and that's how I always start out in grad school. Okay. So I just concentrated. I was disappointed, but that's, you know, that's the way it goes. So I, um, I concentrated on lessons and singing elsewhere and my recital, which, because I really love recital work too. And, uh, and then the next year it all changed. So it was uh, then John Crosby came in and he took over the program at Manhattan School of Music and it was fabulous and it worked out. But my first year, and I tell my students too, when they get all upset, when they don't get a role, I had a speaking role in my first year in grad school, you know, <laughs> a speaking right. role, not even one line. So it was, uh, you know, it worked out. It was kind of good that that happens in a way, you know, just keep plowing through, are you going to do it or, and, and I did, and it worked out. Good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I know it's, uh, it, it's, uh, well, certainly doing schooling in the, um, in the States is an investment, although you, you were a scholarship, but, but it's, it is disappointing that if everyone wants to do the, the big lead, obviously, but I, that is not possible. Right. So no, I just wanted a line. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that I sang and it really it really was okay it wasn't like even at Illinois Wesley in a small school that I was used to getting everything for one thing I'm a mezzo soprano so you know there's um it's different than being a soprano um and two um it, there was always competition which I think is good you know that's reality okay. so uh and so you just either get all upset or you work harder and um and luckily, I really did love things other than opera, even though I did get to work with George Schick there, who was a wonderful conductor. And uh, I got to um, coach with some really wonderful people during that year. So it wasn't all disaster. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be, right. you know, in the first year. Right. And um, you said that you, you, you were a met. So when do you discover that you were a met as compared with a soprano? Um, I, I was talking to Jim about this the other day. It just popped into my head that, uh, I think I was in what we called junior high school at the time. So I was probably 13 or something like that. And the, uh, I was in a thing called special choir and, um, and the conductor of the choir wanted me to sing, um, Oh, what was it? Um, summertime. And I couldn't. It was too high. And he was really surprised. He's like, hmm, that's interesting. You know, so that's the first time that I realized I, I wasn't a soprano. Right. And I, I couldn't hold the tessitura. I had no, I mean, not like, I hadn't taken a voice lesson. I didn't even know it, you know, had no idea what tessitura was. Um, and so that was the first time I even realized that I well, at that moment, um, I wasn't a soprano. So, um, so gradually, and then kind of found all throughout my career, I was, you know, trying to find out exactly where, what's good, 
what fits, you know, what's fits. So it definitely a mezzo soprano, but probably a little sometimes dipped into something a little bit higher. All right. Yeah, so that that's a, I'm sure that is a discovery. What was my instrument, right? So it's like think yep. that that is very typical of typical for singers, but not for other instruments. I mean, you exactly. you may choose different instruments, where I say, okay, so I'm a singer, but and and we know in the low voice in the low male voices, I'm a, I'm a baritone, I'm a bass baritone, I'm a bass. I'm a, it's just it takes takes time. Yeah, and sometimes it takes a lot of uh, trial error, right? So yeah, try this aria, this other aria, this other aria. Yeah, and then things change over time like they do, just meaning that um, as my voice grew, as I knew how to sing better, as uh, time went on, I realized some other roles that I could sing. Not, I don't mean exactly into soprano roles, I mean just higher meds, you know, what I, every singer has to find out a little at a time um, as you go through your career, what's, what's right? Right, yes, exactly. <laughs> So, Anna, sorry, my friend. Rapsi! She, she, she got interested in something. Um, and uh, so, and, and funny that you, you studied at Manhattan and, and now uh, James Morris, your, your husband, is also teaching there. Yeah. Uh, which is, did he study there? No, no. He, he went to various, he'll tell yeah, you. <laughs> he'll tell you next week. I, I just want to know that if it was both of you uh, there. And, um, Great. So, so you went to Manhattan for, for your master's and you were in New York. That was, I mean, of course, you, you were familiar with New York from your, from your childhood in, in a way. I mean, I, you said you came to the opera and all that. I did. My, my father took me to the opera and I did go my, uh, I went on my own a couple of times when my teacher at high school, um, drama teacher, uh, the um, Don Jones, by the way, who I saw in Savannah last summer when oh, I was there. Oh, right, right. We were talking about that. And uh, and he was uh, he went to the opera. He I think I believe he lived in the city at the time, and he gave me a couple of tickets. And I went in all by myself, which I find really you know good for you. Anyway, um, on a school night, you know, to go in and see a few things, and uh, but living in the city. And being at Manhattan School of Music was much different. And going in from um, my hometown, and I loved it. I really loved it. And as a, as a student, and I loved Manhattan School of Music, and as a student, um, there were so many things to do to get a student ticket or to go for nothing or to, you know, so, and it still is the same that way. You know, as far as uh, getting student tickets, they still have them. They but uh, so you can go see everything. And I, I really enjoyed that part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Wow. Fun. Uh, and so, and after that, how do you start your, your professional career? So I, I was really, really, really lucky. And when John Crosby came in, he brought um, uh, a production from, so he was the head of Santa Fe Opera. He's the one who uh, started Santa Fe Opera. And um, and he came in and brought a production from Santa Fe uh, to bring to Manhattan School of Music. And it was called The Italian Straw Hat by Nino Rota. Um, and there was a great role in it for mezzo-soprano. And, um, and I got the role. And, um, and I ended up working with some, he also brought in some directors from, well, Santa Fe, St. Louis, um, you know, there were some in Houston. And when I did uh, the Italian Straw Hat, uh, I, it went very well. And um, it just so happened, I hadn't even graduated. And they said St. Louis, which I think was two years old, St. Louis Opera at the time. Oh, wow. so, yeah, that's how long ago. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I didn't know that. That actually, uh, that St. Louis was that new. I thought it was older. Yeah, like, no, like what? Oh, quite a while ago, though. Still, and and yeah. and they um and they needed a mezzo soprano, and not a big part, but actually had a little aria. And oh, what was the name of it? Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of it right now. It's not a piece that's ever done, and it's not by even uh, who wrote it. Mm, 
so it's about Mozart time. And uh, okay. it's, oh, that, that, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. But anyway, so they asked me to do it. And so I, I can't even believe I thought about it because why would you think about it, you know, go do it. But I did, should I stay? Should I finish? Should I do this? And then, you know, and then five minutes later, of course you need to do this. So I went to St. Louis and uh, started there and had my debut there, which was, you know, it's a little scary. The first just hopping off to do your first job and I had no clue and what any, any of it meant. And, uh, and meeting all new singers who had been around for a little bit. And um, and so I did that. And then from there, I went to Sa uh, Santa Fe as an apprentice. And I had- That was the same summer or the next summer? Summer, so it was, okay. I went from May to June, then June, when it was over, then I went straight to Santa Fe. And, uh, and then I, uh, I was just, it does, it was really, timing luck you know it was just really good luck and uh, from there um i ended up going to um, san francisco and being in their young artist program and they didn't have i didn't go to marilla um but they have what are now adler fellows mm -hmm. i was adler was still alive so there were no Adler fellows at the time. It was a different program, and but it was somewhat the same. It was about it was two years there that you work uh, with the company, and it was just an amazing start to have. So it was things kind of. And that was right, right, right out of college. I mean, that was the next year, right? It seems like. Yeah, it was total. You know, just something total luck that it was really. You know, the thing at uh, Manhattan School of Music went well. And then um, then all of a sudden I'm, you know, in St. Louis. And so I had an agent. And then all of a sudden I'm in San Francisco. No, in uh, Santa Fe, which I loved, loved, loved being an apprentice there and working in the chorus mainly. I mean, you know, being in the chorus and doing that whole thing, working with other singers, my, you know, the other apprentices, which was incredible, a great opportunity. And then I had, I did the page in Zalame when I was there and that was good. I mean, that was more experience, you know, just more and more experience. And then going to uh, San Francisco where you really just get, uh, at that time, it was a bit of a different company too. And we, they had a spring opera, so we got, the you know main roles and in the spring opera but during the season we're standing there on the stage with you know luciano pavarotti and you know just marilyn horn you know all my idols that i could just go talk to and ask everything and um you know and just uh do any role they asked me to do and just work 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 so great yeah, it was really so you were two there two years in in San Francisco as a, as a young artist. I also they also had a program then called affiliate artists. Well, that was affiliate artists was what they call the young artist program in San Francisco, but it was also a program that you went around. You were assigned to a town, and this had nothing to do with. It was a different program that originated in New York City, and any kind of singer or pianist or uh, they got hired to, and it was part of the um, San Francisco opera program. And so we went to a town and they could use us for anything they wanted for a week. And then we go back, I think it was six weeks during the year. So you were singing at a Lions Club meeting or you're singing at a, a grammar school or, or you're singing at a high school, or you're singing at a ladies thing. I sang in prisons. Um, I, ha I sang for about, it was a about 40 minute program. That was amazing because you're just singing, you know, singing, just stand up and sing, you know, so anywhere you were, you learned, I learned to, um, to just start singing in public. And uh, no matter what terrible thing happened in the middle of it, meaning that the music fell off the piano and you just keep going or somebody started talking in the middle of it or, you know, things happened. And, um, or the one time they brought in a birthday cake right in the middle of my aria, you know, so they, you know, <laughs> happy birthday. 
birthday to somebody. So you just kept, okay, you know, so you just learned, I learned to deal with, um, and the other uh, musicians that did this program learned to deal to, with a lot of crazy things happening on stage. That's, that seems like a good program, a good idea to, to, to facilitate for these communities to have, uh, you know, like almost like a mini resident, oh, a resident artist for a short time that they can use for everything because that, uh, I, I imagine that some towns will be afraid that uh, oh, the, we cannot do this or, or they don't even know that they could do it. And it's actually quite easy. But uh, to say, okay, so you have that, use it. And so, oh, and then, then you, once they start thinking about it, there are many things that they can oh, be. Oh, every, yeah, a lot. And, and it's a good thing for the art form also because, again, that facilitates people to hear uh, classical singing and and you know eventually love it or not i mean that that, that what we never know but uh, but that sounds like a like a very good idea yeah it was uh good for the towns i think but it was really good for the the performers too so um yeah, yeah it was it was good. a learning experience <laughs> and also and how fun. was how was san francisco after new york um i then Loved. Well, at first I was waiting for the warmth, and and never comes. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was there last summer doing uh, Merola, uh, yeah. conducting a scenes, and and it was most uh, half June, all of July. It's foggy. Yeah. It's you know. So you bring all your you know. I was I was one of those people. I went out and had you know moved to San Francisco and. Um, and I was waiting for summer and there's not a summer. It's, I had my clothes ready, you know, and my summer clothes and it's really pretty cold and windy in, um, I heard July. That October is the is warmest. It's really beautiful. Right in September, it starts getting, mm, okay, that's really lovely. And October is gorgeous, but the summer is pretty cold. Yeah. So. And especially coming out of San, uh, Santa Fe, right? That yeah. It's, it's... yeah, no, it was just something to get used to. And I and I remember going out to dinner one night with friends who had been there more than I had been there. And they were all in their winter clothes going out <laughs> to dinner in July. And I was trying to wear my summer. And I thought, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you, I really love San Francisco. I still do. Right, right. And I, it's my my home company for sure. Yeah. And um, so, so, and after the the, the resting artist there in in San Francisco Opera, did, did what happened? Well, um, I uh, it, I was. I'm trying to think. So I still stayed with them. I sang for them every year. They brought me back. They had a summer. Uh, what what do they have now? Uh, they had a. a a uh, fall went fall through January program, and then they had a summer opera program, and uh, so I was lucky to keep going back to San Francisco. In the meantime, I was also starting um, to work elsewhere, and uh, it, and the um, company San Diego, Baltimore, uh, Florida, Miami Opera, and then I did and go to Europe, and um, had a debut there. Uh, and then, with how did you uh, how did you decide to go to Europe? Did someone offer you something, or or you say, okay, let's let's try this? Well, I once again was lucky. So I had worked in Montreal, um, doing Cherubino, and the director there uh, went to uh, talked to Geneva about hiring me. So. Um, so I did end up, is that where I premiered? I can't, I can't remember where I did, I can't, no, Strasbourg, Strasbourg, sorry. It was Strasbourg. And also he, and this, I also ended up going to Geneva because of that. So, um, so I got uh, a job in um, Strasbourg and uh, that was the composer in Ariadna. So, so that kind of started things off over there. And then I did, I went around and did uh, an audition trip, a little audition trip for everybody. And that's something you could do back then. I mean, it was my manager who set it up. And then it just kind of 
went from, you know, one started building from um, working one place to the next place and getting hired back. And um, so I worked in Europe quite a bit. Right. Yeah. So, so you were you already had a, a, a manager, so which is I'm sure that uh, you know that that helps. I, I mean, because you you, oh, you had a manager right off uh, uh, St. Louis. Oh yeah, from Manhattan School of Music. Oh, so oh, really? they, even, even when you were in Manhattan, music they started talking to me, and then um, I went to um, then I to St. Louis. Yeah, and I had a manager. So yes. And then I went to San Francisco and they supported me. So this is not, you know, it's not a normal thing. It was totally luck, luck, luck. And I was certainly, able to certainly, good, uh, mostly, ta mostly talent to, to, to back it up. But I understand, I, I understand the, the, the need of, of being in the right place at the right time. That is definitely the case. Right. But of course, uh, had you know sound well, the, the role in, in El Capello di Paglia, you know, not been, you know, nothing would have happened. It, it was, so. Right, right. So it was, but it started out, you know, it started out with me singing, uh, not even singing, it was started out with me in the speaking role. So it was really, you know, so I had started that way. I really do tell my students, just hang on, you know, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep be plugging along because it really isn't always, it, I mean, I really was lucky with going to various things, but um, but the first year was a disaster you know, as far as it was me. You know, I mean, I got a, a wonderful opportunity to coach with people, but it wasn't okay. Here, here we go. You know, I, it wasn't even a scene. You know, so it was just um, okay. Let's let's see what happens and. That's Once happened. you finished the um, the Chicago program, uh, did you stay? In, sorry, the San Francisco. Program, did you stay there or? I no, I moved back to New York, but I went there every year for many years um, until I stopped singing uh, professionally. So, uh, and that really, I just fell in love with San Francisco too. So I went back quite a bit, um, and um, and then uh, then. You know, then I got more opportunities in the United States also, and I did uh, start at the Met. And but um, so it was back and forth between Europe and, and the United States for a while. And um, and also I met my husband. So what? in that, yeah. how, how did that happen? Uh, uh, well, we met a couple of times. I mean, we worked together a couple of times, and then we met in um, Denver, and we were working mm -hmm. there. So that's that's where we started. All right. Well, <laughs> started, what show were you doing together? That was Hoffman, Tales of Hoffman, which was also my debut at the Met, too. So it was a, a lucky role. And, uh, um, yeah. And I assume you were doing um, um, Niklaus. Yeah, I did Niklaus there. I did Niklaus at the Met. I also did do, what's the other one? Uh-oh, uh, the one that Mezzos do. The, the, um, the Mother or, or Julieta? Julieta, okay. yeah. And I liked that one too, but Niklaus was, I did a lot of uh, pants rolls. That was my thing uh, from my Fach, my Mezzo Fach. And uh, so those were basically, um, so the Niklaus fit really well. And um, Julieta was a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's not long, but it's, it's just that duet is not yeah. great. Yeah. 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 So it's really wonderful. And, uh, and how, did, how did the Met uh, uh, debut came by? Well, I had been um, working in, uh, around and I had been working in um, San Francisco and then they kind of, you know, hear things. And so, uh, so what happened? I can't, so I was also about to work in Chicago and there was, uh, I got an audition. So I ended up auditioning um, for Maestro Levine and, um, and that's how it started. And then, yeah. How many, and then, many seasons were you at the Met? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, it was, I don't know, like ten maybe altogether. Oh. 
Um, a lot. Yeah. Um, so like Chiarabino, a lot. Uh, Idamante, you know, the pants rolls. Did I ever, oh yes, I did it. Let's see, what was it? Uh, not Yenifa. Uh, Katka Kabanova, um, that's a dress role. Um, actually, played, dress role. <laughs> actually played a woman. Um, Dora Bella, you know, the right. lyrics. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, the fun, fun mezzo role. And um, so, uh, I was going to say, so how, um, so you have a, a very, very busy career uh, in, how was the different, how was the difference between working in uh, in the States or in Europe? Well, Europe, um, I loved working in Europe. Obviously, there's, um, there's a language thing that, you know, you have to get much better at your languages to get along. Um, it's, a, it's far away. I loved, uh, I mean, it's far away from family and friends. There were no computers that you're taking along with you, you know, when I was, uh, when I was singing in Europe. So, um, but some of the, some of it was just absolutely wonderful and other things just, I was there for a very, very long time, you know, months doing a new production. And um, I hear it from many singers, you know, you, you're away, you're away from your friends and family for a long time that you can't just pop on back. So, um, but I, I loved, I loved Paris. I, you know, just really loved being over there. And it was really good if it was a good performance and a nice director and, co and conductor, you know, and um, that's what always makes all the difference. Good colleagues, you know, and I had many wonderful opportunities. Um, I, of course, being in at the Met was really great um, because that's I'm from Long Island and I was living in the New York area. So um, it was nice to be home and sing. That was uh, and San Francisco always felt comfortable. But it's the same old thing as a singer, you know, you're just traveling around, traveling around. And, uh, and sometimes it's nice to be around with your near your family, friends and family, too. And um, so I did enjoy Europe a lot. I, I stopped singing professionally around 50 years old. And that's oh. because, I, that's because I wins late in my life in my life so in my 40s so when i had twin children jim and i had twin children um things got a lot more complicated as so far as your first, first children uh yes and i have stepdaughter yes but my the, my wow that's uh that's uh, a lot of a lot of difference yeah suddenly but 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 already you had a very long career so you no, I was you wanted to do something new obviously so yeah i did something new all right so i, I definitely did and uh i mean we hit the jackpot you know it was twins which was really great a boy and a girl and they're wonderful but uh by eight, when they started going to school we we couldn't both be traveling around so uh and i really wanted to be with my children so um they needed somebody at home and i was happy to do it so uh yes. so yeah so my life but, but yeah which, oh you say you have a very fulfilling busy comforting career that that you say okay but that you know i i done that i know i can do it i just choose to do something else right now yeah, or... yeah i and i wanted children so or a child or something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah um and yeah you think you think the, the fact that, that you were uh, more than 40 and and usually you do a lot of punch roles which usually are younger in the character uh, make a difference and you say well I'm you know what I, I don't think it made a difference for me stopping but because if even it, if it had been otherwise you know I would have uh, I couldn't have been traveling around with a nanny uh, you know and they're gonna about to go to school you know for me that wasn't a possibility um, so we did uh, so I did still sing pants rolls up until I, I stopped singing professionally um, but yes, that would have, that was definitely something that would have changed. Um, because as you're nearing 50, nobody, well, Carabino, nobody wants to see a Carabino who's 50, you know, so, and I did do, um, see a bell in my late forties, which didn't, I thought I felt okay about it, but then right. that would, but that would have not been okay 
much more. So, um, yeah, so that definitely was uh, of concern. All the, of all the productions and places you've been, any, any production that you remember especially? Um, there were some, I, I really, it's always some, right? It's not just one, but, um, but I loved doing, um, the composer in Los Angeles was a very, uh, special time. Um, doing the composer, um, was one of my favorite roles and, uh, Octavian, um, and also in, uh, in San Francisco, same kind of experience, but the first one was Los Angeles also doing, um, I'm talking about, um, not places, not necessarily places where I wanted to be all the time. It was just the group of people that were there and that we worked together. Um, where do you do the Rosen Cavalier? Uh, my first Rosen Cavalier was in, um, Los Angeles. And that was also one of the best uh, times of my life as far as performing because the group of us the, who were there were just, um, we t it was just a wonderful experience altogether. And um, so, and where else did I do it? I did it in Portland, I did it in Europe, I did it in a Amsterdam, I did it, I can't even remember right now where else. Um, I almost did it at the Met, but I had to cancel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, painful, painful. I was sick. Um, and um, oh, I can't even remember. I can't remember. There, there is more. I can't remember there, right now. Yeah, but the, but certainly the 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 one in in uh, in LA, and it's um, it's one of the few. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many are there, but maybe, maybe should have gone, but uh, uh, the few puns roles are the title role. So, yeah, yeah. you get the wow. <laughs> <laughs> very, very unusual. And, but, uh, and it's still, to this date, uh, the final trio is my favorite piece of, I mean, I mean, it, I, mean I feel more associated with it, or more, you know, leaning towards Italian opera, and um, certainly Puccini and Donizetti are my, if I had to pick two, the, uh, but still, uh, the final trio of Rosen Cavalier, I think, is the most is my very favorite scene of all yeah. of opera. It's just, it's just I, a I, pleasure. It, it really is amazing, and uh, and it is one of my. I can't even listen to it; it makes me cry. You know, it's just so incredible. I do listen to it, but I am crying when I'm listening. It's just, so <laughs> and the scene it's self at, for Octavian especially because Octavian is between the you know has just been between the two um sopranos um it it really is a wonderful scene and um and Octavian is such a great role you know it's anyway very so youthful and you know just changes so quickly within the whole opera so um yeah no it is did it, did it take long to learn it's a long show uh, um, I, yeah, uh, not so, I mean, I had to learn it. So, uh, it, it, you know, I started, we started it was, so this was way a long time ago. They did it in English down in Los Angeles at first. And that was a great way to start it yeah. almost even the, and then I did work with Hans Hotter, who was a fabulous, um, you know, singer in, in his time. And he was also a great teacher and I just worked with him, um, a couple of times and he just great gave me I, I went into it feeling very strong and um understanding the role and then of course learned much more the more time i was there but um yeah, yeah it's it's it, but you know yeah it's a long role but there's longer so. yeah, yeah good <laughs> yeah. and and um when do you start teaching uh, um I mean, maybe maybe you taught all the time, but now you're you're a professor and and and, and Rutgers. So, how do you did how did the teaching came back to your life? Well, what happened was, well, I had been working in the schools with uh, my children's schools in town with bringing um, arts to the school and uh, teaching them about opera. And Jim and I went in and a couple of times and they put on costumes and we did an opera, you know, we really, um, 
So I had been working, teaching along and also working with some students, but um, my children were going off to college. And so I was at a place where I thought I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So I was very grateful to be invited to teach at Mason Gross at Rutgers. And that's how it started. And okay, so that was your, your that, that was your, your going, coming back to, to teaching. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's uh, where I, you know, really started teaching in a school situation. And I really, I really love it. It's really, when they practice, but. <laughs> but, how, but many, how many students do you have there? Uh, right now, now I have eight. Okay. Good. It depends year to year. So I like to teach, um, not, you know, I'm part time. Um, and one year can be 12, 13, and then the next year of graduation, you know, for people. And so it goes back and forth. But right now, it's right. Um, really nice. Yeah. They're great. It's a, it, and then, it's a different. Well, I mean, you 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 experience the, the the education world from a student, and then now as a teacher, it's quite quite different. Obviously, with all the experience, and but uh, but singing voice is, is is fun, and I mean, it's just we love the repertoire. So oh, oh yeah, no, and uh, I love being in the um, art song repertoire, and um, because I really do have a love for that, and also. Um, in opera two in schools, but when they're starting out, they're not singing, you know, Verdi arias. They're, we're starting from the beginning. And uh, no, I love the music. I, their um, students are really interesting and great and um, some so incredibly enthusiastic, which really is fun for me. And How long have you been in Rutgers? Um, let's see, I think this is my eighth year. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's quite a bit, yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit long, but that's, that is a fun thing. Uh, do you, how do you translate your singing to the teaching? Um, how do I translate? Well, uh, that's really good thing to, that you learn slowly. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it, and I'm still getting, I'm still thinking about it. And, you know, it depends student to student um, that I, I really, uh, you know, I have to figure out some way to explain this differently. So it's, uh, so it really changes from day to day, to, uh, depending on what the student needs at the time. And, um, but I had a, my last voice teacher who was in San Francisco, Dixon Titus. Um, I was with him for about 20 years until he died. Oh. And it wasn't, it, you know, missed him terribly um but he taught me so i really knew what i was doing so it wasn't um kind of do this kind of i mean well, he was very specific uh so that when i went away to t to sing i could and if i was having trouble i could really think what am i doing you know what am i doing and so working with him um, I really could put into words what I was doing. So that really um, helps when I'm teaching, that I had a teacher like that, that I came from really knowing why does this work, why does that not work. And, um, and, and then I've learned a lot along the way, too. So just um, talking to fellow uh, teachers, Jim and I talk, too. You know, and if there's just something we're trying to figure out and and over time, it's I learned from all my students too. you know, how to what they're having trouble with and how are they going to get over this differently than somebody else? You know, somebody just doesn't understand what I'm saying. You have to really where somebody else picked it right up. Um, I have to go at it differently. So it's a puzzle the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, it actually makes it interesting. Okay, now you have a new crop of students. How the what, yeah. how are we going to deal with these ones? Right. And uh, all and they all have different personalities, and um, and I can only go so far with some. You know, I mean, where I'm, it, it sometimes it seems a little torture, like you know, that I'm giving them torture. You know, like uh, no, you know, as far as um, stop, stop, stop. And uh, so that we can get things right. And other time, and some people, students can don't feel it as torture. They feel like it's fun, 
and um, some I just really need to, okay, we'll just pull back, <laughs> you know, let's pull back. Great. And every student is different, Great. you know. Great. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Susan, for, for sharing this hour. Uh, oh, we have a good comment here. And Francis Sokol, thank you for sharing, Susan. You're such an inspiration. You're an awesome mentor to our young. Thank you, thank you. And, and, uh, and, and you know, we know Benjamin from Manhattan and, and students of James, and, uh, and he's been in, in, uh, um, in Savannah. So thank you, Francis, for, for, for being here. And, uh, and, and Susan, thank you so much so much for for well, for all your your uh, wonderful art and but also especially today for sharing this hour with us uh Welcome. it was it was really wonderful to to get to know you more and, and share your story and uh, quite quite lovely thank you thank you it's a pleasure thank you all right and everyone uh thank you for joining us i will see you next time and in two weeks we're going to actually talk to to james and to my son james morris and and so we're going to have his story of of his career so thank you susan again and uh i will see you all um next time at we'll hear more of the voices of the festival thank you take care